I'll jump to if anyone else anyone else have any questions. We can all just come back to this. We so jump to the mention the iconic tree is there. Yeah, sure. The iconic tree is removed in this scheme as it has been since the last meeting. And we're proposing to put it here. And now it looks like it's at the back of the park. You can give us your feedback on it. But we feel like this zone, it actually here, it could go here as well. So that's the existing tree you're going to No, the existing it. tree is here and it would be, it's too large to move. Yeah, that's why I said you can't yeah. move it. No, we wouldn't be able to move it without a very large sum of money. So it would be wise to replant another A tree. sizable one. Yeah, yeah. So just to zoom into the southern part of the site, Here's that overlook that we talked about before. There's 20 feet of grade change. Right now, it's essentially what we're doing, and I need to look at my notes for this so that I get this right. We have about a space of 30 feet where that slope exists. If you can remember, there's a four foot or five foot chain link, chain link fence at the top of the slope, and then it just basically runs down to a concrete retaining wall at the edge of the roundhouse lot. This is the retaining wall as it exists today, and there's parking right here. And this is where that uh, fence is. So this is about 30 feet from here to here. What we've done is we've gained another 30 feet, or actually here, we gained more. And so we brought this grade out. It's much more gentle. We have a completely accessible walk coming down the hillside. And we provide gathering spaces with benches and lawn and planting and an actual connection when you get to the bottom this connection down is real trail. And we're proposing to actually add some trees and in the roundhouse lot to green it. This is the same thing that's happening in a lot of your other parking lots. We feel like it's a good move. The city's already doing it. It makes sense. A couple site sections, just so that you can understand the space. This is as if you're standing on Main Street looking into the park. So here's Memorial Hall and these trees that are existing. And here's the Academy of Music. There's about 85 feet wide is the Flossy Plaza. When you're coming off the crosswalk, which is about 12 feet wide, the crosswalk lines up with this promenade that runs right through the park and is where the stage is as well. There's about 40 feet of this woodland garden, and then the bus stop is at this edge, the western edge, about 20 feet wide. Question, what kind of trees are you proposing for, for you know, close to this? We're proposing hawthorns in this, but with schematic design. So right now we're showing them as something like hawthorn. So what's their mature size height? I mean, a hawthorn at this, we're showing them probably five years in. So we'd like to see them so that the canopy, the lowest limb, actually is never lower than eight or nine feet. We want it to feel like there's a ceiling, but not a barrier of a view into the park. But a hawthorn doesn't get as large as I can't tell you exactly. It depends on the cultivar, but if we chose like a winter pink hawthorn, they grow pretty slowly, so maybe it would become 25 feet tall at maturity, but we can also prune them if we didn't want something too high. It's not really the height of the top that worries us, it's more we want something that feels penetrable and open and permeable from the human perspective, like eye level and just above eye level. It does, but I just think on a street, on the, if you're, if you're on the street, it's helpful to have mm -hmm. a broader canopy and more shape. Yeah. Especially because that's a bus stop and people have to stand in this. That was one of the reasons why we kept the large, the large tree, actually, because it provides so much canopy. Because before we had studied it by all the trees go away, and right now there are a couple street trees there and it's got a lot of understory, so it's very shaded. And what we're trying to do is keep some shade, but actually have some character as well and have some boss feeling. So I think when you see the perspectives, maybe that will help convey the type of feeling that we're trying to achieve. Another um, section that shows lengthwise, cutting from Main Street all the way through the park, <coughs> down what we're calling the overlook, that reclaimed hillside, through the parking lot, and then ultimately to this rail trail. And just to zoom in, so there's an eight foot sidewalk that's at Main Street. Here are these trees in the plaza, which is about 50 feet deep. 
there's another 15 foot wide walk that goes between the plaza and the lawn. And then this expansive lawn is about 150 feet long. And then this is where we're actually cutting right through the middle so you don't see the playground, the nature play area. So you're looking towards the Memorial Hall. Then there's this 15 foot promenade of the map which connects you from South Street to the Anna. And then the beginning of the overlook. And as you head down the overlook, this dash line shows what the slope is now, today. And this is showing what we're doing, adding all of this fill so that you can actually maneuver your way down this hillside. And then the introduction of trees into this parking lot, and then the connection to the rail trail. Can I ask you a question? Sure. On that overlook side, coming up from the back, is there a ramp there for accessibility, or is it all stairs? No, the entire thing is a series of ramps. And Again, 20 feet of grade change. What we're showing is there is a staircase here, but the primary way of getting down would be through this ramp system. Okay. And it's not technically a ramp. A ramp is anything over 5%, and a ramp means that you need to have railing. This is actually an accessible walkway, so it's less than 5%. It's like 3.5 in some places and 4.5%. So it's very manageable. It's not steep. And um, so it doesn't need a railing. Though. It doesn't need a railing. Technically, it doesn't need a railing, but we may decide to do a railing if we feel like that's that's, that's the request. But by you know uh, regulation standards, it doesn't. Here we need railings along the staircase. Um, this is a stair. We actually added this stair. This wasn't in the last one, and we should get we, we should give feedback on that. A lot of folks, I think, felt like as you come in to this area and coming down, they just wanted a little bypass to, to jump down the hillside. We didn't have it last time, so. So that would be the old stairs, basically? This is in the same, similar location. The old stairs are actually right here. So we moved it over slightly, but similar to where it is. And, and it only goes steep. part way down. <coughs> oh, is, and is that path there in the same place as the old path? <laughs> this path right here? Yeah, is that where the path yeah, is? Yeah, that's roughly where the path is. It's probably actually pushed north a little bit. I think the existing path is like right here. So, so the proposed child's play area, is that sort of across the path from where it is currently? Yep, so here's that path. And right now the existing play is right here. Mm -hmm. And we're actually showing it in this area. So it is, it's on the other side of the path. It's more associated with green and this sort of quieter zone. We're, pl we're planting a hedge and sort of like a wooden thicket in between that loading area for the academy to have clear separation between uh, parks and the activities of the academy. Hi. So with the designing of this park, definitely being kept accessible, correct? Yes. And the play area. So somebody with a child from the roundhouse parking lot could get to the play area from the back? Yeah, okay. absolutely. They could come up that walkway, ramping walkway, park at the parking lot, come up the ramping walkway, and come into the playground. Could you explain a bit about what happens with the water yeah. as it gets towards the Sure. Hill? Yeah, I mean, we haven't completely solved it because well, it's a like concept. Yeah. What we'd like to envision, actually, we have drawings that show what okay. we envision. 
Can I? Can yeah. I? Get, yeah. Because then we can talk about that. Mm-hmm. We're really excited to show you the drawing. We've done a few more perspectives. We felt like at the last meeting people got most excited about the vision and the perspectives, so we wanted to do a few more. Okay. So this is a view as if you're standing here at the Academy of Music over here, and this is Main Street, and there's Memorial the Hall. So you can see this is the existing ramp as it is today. You come up to the top of it and there's stairs from down into the park. This is the bus stop reconfigured against that ramp. And this is the plaza. And this is that historic tree that we were talking about, the sycamore. The lawn beyond, and then the edge of that overlook. And this is that promenade that comes in. This is the water feature that is sort of the spring source of the, the stormwater garden that we're talking about. Question? <laughs> Where's the stage? The stage is actually hidden by the canopy of this tree, but it would be right about here. You can sort of see the edge of it. Yeah, sure. And I think that this gets back to those trees and kind of balancing the act of providing shade, but also having an open yeah, eye. Sure. So they accomplish what I see as a major project of the existing conditions, which is a kind of barrier. Right. So, so I guess I'm not that familiar with the different trees. I think you said they were awful. So I don't know. I guess I would just keep that in mind that the not just the height, but the the branches. The broad branches, sure. Yeah. yeah, that thing. Like you can you can trim up a pin oak, which grows to a magnificent height and has a lot of shade, but will still give that openness that you yeah. see through. I think that for us, we were studying something that looked different and felt like a box. And a box meaning um, it was more about a garden space as opposed to a woodland scale. The pin oak will get to be 65 feet tall, so. That's the, that was the trade-off. And I think we can look at, diff- we'll definitely look at different options for trees. Yeah, just because the street is right there, and for mm-hmm. folks who like pick up their kids from the bus stop and have to yeah. stay in their car in the, in the full sun. I mean, so be thinking about the effect that it has on the street scale. Sure. And we definitely, I mean, these trees will give shade, no doubt about it. They just won't give as much shade as, you know, something like a maple or, mm-hmm. or a, you know, so. But that's, a, that's an important Especially, you know, a day like today, it's very hot. Yeah. And the valley is sweltering in, in the summer. So. Question here? Yeah, you know, wh- what do you estimate the number of people that could be on that green? It's 150 feet wide by, what, 85 feet. I, I couldn't tell you exactly. It could definitely hold a big event. It could hold a very large event. I mean, I'm thinking a, a typical wedding tent is 40 feet by 60 feet. You could fit 200 people on that. And Okay, here's another view. You saw this view. We tweaked it a little bit um, from last time. This is a summer view looking as if you're crossing. Here's that crosswalk coming off Main Street and you're looking into the park. So, you know, the way we rendered this, we definitely want shape. We want it to feel like it's a place where you can go and have... Um, <coughs> and get some shape. <laughs> I mean, and actually have your lunch. And these movable tables and chairs, we're showing them in every every picture because we feel like it's the type of, um, it's the t- it feels right for this location. And it's kind of exciting to think about a place where you could get your lunch across the street and bring it in here and not have to sit on the ground or just on a bench. You know, maybe you can actually have a different kind of experience and, and move the tables around and chairs around. It can be very flexible. Where, where is the water feature in there? It should be over. The water feature is right here. This is the actual, what we're showing is a very, sh- a, a low fountain that's sort of the square stone fountain. And it feeds this swale that's running behind. The so there is a fountain. Yes, we've been showing a fountain in the plaza as sort of the head of this bio swale. It's, it's, um, I can go back to the plan afterwards. But it's, it's shown as a blue square, basically. And the idea is that this water would have to be recirculating. But the stormwater garden, the bioswale, is something that all of the grading from 
I mean, all of the stormwater runoff from the west side of the park and the east side of the park actually flows into this low point and actually cleanses. It becomes a water quality, um, water quality opportunity. So all the runoff from the park goes into this swale. So that's so the fountain is solely a fountain which recirculates itself. Exactly. And the bioswale has a whole other purpose function. Yes. Yeah. So the grasses that are growing in that bioswale, do they get mowed? You know, just grow usually what we do when, when we have these is probably once a year in the fall, they get cut back. Mm -hmm. And as what we've done is we've shown it getting progressively more wild. I don't want to say wild, it's, yeah. like it's an urban landscape, but um, we might go from grasses to introduce, <laughs> say, an understory plant or a winterberry, a shrub. And as you get you know farther towards the overlook, that you would have uh, more diversity. <laughs> and so, yes, once a year. You could see things getting pruned, or actually, act, you know, you can go in and, and, and cut the grasses. That Does it accumulate trash? I, I get this feeling that I think that like when that is a litter people stuff. really feel. I mean, that's the perception. But uh, I wish I had. I might have a photo of one that we've done where you can see you can see what it looks like um, when it's lush and it's fully planted. It's not a place that picks up trash because there's vegetation there. I mean, it's a it's an element. It's like a, a garden bed, so it's mm -hmm. not necessarily something that's that. Stop kids from throwing their empty bottles in there. Yeah, I think it's, it's going to feel like a mess because the vegetation is going to come up out of it. So it's, it's not a, even though it's a depression, um, grading wise, there's a volume of things in it that don't. You if know, I step in it, will I get wet? If you step in it, will you get wet? I would say no. After it rains. Oh, no, so maybe long. after it rains, but we're going to have a low point in the middle. Water should never sit in it. So, so it's not actually like a stream, a little stream? No, the way that it's designed, I mean, we probably will have to line it, uh, which means that we put a lining down, kind of like a pond, I don't know if some of you are familiar with like a pond <coughs> lining. Um, and then you put your soils in, and then you put your planting medium in. And when the water goes into it, it basically filters through the plants and the roots and the soil, and all of the toxins and the suspended solids that are coming with sediment that comes off, you know, the walkways and, and stuff gets trapped in there, and that's that's the good thing. And then the water percolates through into a pipe. The pipe then actually connects to the conventional stormwater system. This is the same, similar to what happens with the catch basin, but the catch basin misses the opportunity to cleanse the suspended solids of toxins. Yeah. So this is really a wonderful thing. We're doing this at UMAPS, actually, a really large one. 400 feet of it along North Pleasant Street Amherst, um, which is exciting. And they probably built, we built a very large one at UMass Southwest Golf Course. And um, what's wonderful is, I mean, if your environmental ethic here in this city is to say, we want to go, you know, carbon neutral by a certain date, or uh, this, is a, this is a very small thing, but it's very simple <coughs> that you can do that says, hey, all site runoff from this park is going to go back into the system, ultimately goes into the River and Connecticut River, couldn't go back clean. So, yeah. so it's, it's a great thing. So, so the perception of water at the park would be just the fountain. It wouldn't be that there would be a, a long stream of water that goes on the stage. Well, I'll tell you, you know what it is? We're drawing it like there's a blue line that yeah. goes through there. And the truth is, when it rains and it's a large <coughs> rain event, you might see water flowing down the middle, but it won't ever be like a stream. It's not going to be constant. And what will represent water are the plants that we plant. So just like when you drive past a wetland, you can tell it's a wetland even if you can't see the water because the plants represent that, that system. Does that make sense? So when you see iris, the long band of iris, you know that's a wet area. So that's, that's our goal is that this thing looks good even when it's dry and it functions when it's dry in the wetland. And the fountain, yeah. is that meant to be a kid play space or, or a decorative fountain? Sorry, what was that? Yeah, the fountain, is that meant to be a decorative fountain or a kid play fountain? Well, you know, we made it actually 18, 12 to 18 inches high with the purpose of people being able to interact with it. So that, I think, yeah, we, we would like kids especially to interact with it. So that's why we made it 12 to 18 inches high. 12 to 18 inches high, do you mean high. deep? Just high off the ground. 12 to 18 inches high. Is there any water accumulated in there? So we haven't designed it yet, but the way we're envisioning it is literally a, a a slab of stone 
It's that, just water that goes through it. So that no water actually emits out of the top of it and it's a very thin sheet over it. So it's like a wet stone. So there'll be no pool of water. No pool of water. The water actually just flows out of, of something in the center of the stone. Or we're not sure yet, but that's yeah, the yeah. idea. We've done yeah, something similar and we, we yeah. like that. It's, it's quiet. I mean, we're showing in one area, you could change you know, how much water comes out of it, but the idea is it's not a, it's not a pool. Kids could get wet standing on the inside. Like it's yeah, you can touch it. Yep. Okay, so at nighttime, we think that mm -hmm. string lights um, could really help this uh, enliven this area. This plaza could turn into a flexible space where you can have performance and impromptu gathering um, events that spill off the green. Um, and then this is a view. As you're coming in on the South Street side behind the Academy of Music. So you're coming along this walkway and you're looking into the park and the lawn, and here's the play area. We're showing some kind of play structure that's climbable. Um, we'd love to do a play structure that has a relationship to this region. So whether it's something that you know we use black locust. I say black locust because I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with this, but every every harm post in Deerfield, for example, was made out of black locusts. And if you go and dig one up now, some of them are 150 years old and they are still solid. <laughs> They're four feet into the ground. And this is a, it's a verbinia, it's this, you know, this tree that's just amazing. We're starting to use it more and more in the industry because it's native and it actually has this um, resistance that's really wonderful. So decking, play structures, um, there's a place structure in Cambridge Common, which Jim went to go visit, and others are probably familiar with near Harvard. That's really popular, and that was made out of black locusts. Um, so we're showing something here, maybe, you know, something agrarian, like the apple crate concept, or something climbable, something playable. A sandbox. This is the deck that's raised here. So you come in here, this is all level coming down, but that deck here, you can just sort of see a hint of um, depth coming down. But again, as you're coming off the street, this is all level coming in. And then you can enter in here. So this is the, the uh, stormwater garden. See this line of planting? What we're envisioning is it's something that pops up over the edge of the lawn and has some kind of you know seasonality to it. So here we're showing green grasses, um, something maybe it's some kind of little blue stem, and then irises. And as you get towards the end, it becomes uh, more understory and shrub. You know, Witch hazel or birch, even um, American shad, things that are found on the banks of the, the Mill River or Connecticut River natively. The stage goes over that. Yeah, this is okay. the actual stage right here. So we've got, we're showing folks on the stage. Okay. Does that help a little bit? Yeah. So this is the line of the stormwater garden. This is the stage coming through it. There's the memorial. This is the heritage sugar maple. It's up near the front of the memorial hall. And then there's the lawn. And that's that gathering um, seat wall at the edge of the plaza. But, but the memorial will be over on the other side now of the stage. We're showing the memorial on the north side of the stage. So the south side of the stage, the back of the stage will be okay. here. The back of the stage is here. Yep. Okay. So, so those people aren't standing on the stage. They're standing on the stage. Another surface on the other surface is the stage. 
and the stormwater garden goes underneath. I'll do my best. This is a view um, springtime. If you're coming from the plaza, you've just crossed the crosswalk, you're coming through the plaza. The plaza is behind you to the right. This is one of the bridges that goes into the long space. This is the stage area. Yeah. Okay. This is the memorial. Okay. This is the, what we're calling the woodland garden. We're showing it here with a lot of bulbs flowering in the spring. All of these trees are existing that we're keeping. This is a new tree we're proposing here. This is that iconic trees that we're showing at the edge of the lawn space. But that's the new one. It's the new one, yep. Is the woodland garden space <coughs> that you can walk into and through? You know, right now we have a path on both sides. It's not that wide, it's about 40 feet. And, you know, in our original concept during the competition, we had a woodland area and we had a meandering path through it, and that's something that we could definitely consider. Is the stage got a like a lip all the way around it? Now the stage is going to be, this is the stage here. Mm -hmm. Is that a step there? That's no, what it this looks is a like. line and uh, oh. the concrete. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. It looks like a step yeah. pattern. Okay. In, in the place. The stage would be more defined. You should make it a circle or an oval with papers. You couldn't actually make it. We're showing it right now as um, granite. And yeah. really nice native granite. Let me just Granite. <coughs> Maybe that's part of the game. easier to see when I zoom in. So this, this is a granite that actually has a paving pattern that's running long yeah. ways. And so the yeah. idea is if this is a concrete walk, then you come to this stage area and it feels like it's something different. It's like a step in the human. Yeah, yeah. But it isn't. Yeah. But it isn't. It's, a, yeah. it's an expansion joint. Yeah. <laughs> We're trying to be realistic. <laughs> A really big one, so. <laughs> a bad contractor. Um, so this is, and then you can actually see a glimpse of the, the play area. And that's that, let me zoom out. That's the wall I was talking about, this low seat wall. So when you're standing in the, you're standing in the lawn, you can sit on the edge of the seat wall. But then here's the deck that's elevated 18 inches to two feet above the lawn area. And then the grade drops away and steps down into the play area. Hi. Um, it looks like a lot of the seating is, uh, is, is, is still, I mean, it would be very hard for older people to sit on there. Is there any area for other than the little chairs around the table? Where yeah, are you talking about like a bench with a back on it? We've done a lot of benches where we actually can retrofit, you know, a back to it. We can mm -hmm. study other benches. We can look at when it, in design development, which is the next phase, is usually when we start to look at materials. And that's exactly. I mean, at this point, we say schematically, we think that we want seating here. We know we want seating in the, you know, in in the um, central plaza. But the type of seating, we just don't know yet. I mean, it's impossible to know yet without really looking at what kind of seating you already have in the city. What are your seating? We should have more. Any more questions? Yeah, I have one more. Sure. Uh, on the map that we, or the schematics that we've been given, um, there's a place called Pulaski Plaza. Yes. And um, I, I think it really should be Pulaski Park. Uh, I, I, we never refer to it as Pulaski Plaza. The plaza is only meant to describe the area at the edge of the. Okay, so you're not changing the name from Pulaski Park? No, Plaza. definitely not. Any no. possibility for maybe a, a stone monument that might say Pulaski Park at the beginning of the park? Yeah, that, I think that's a great idea. An actual park sign as yeah. you enter. Yep. Thank you. That's a great idea. So, for movies, would there be a screen there that would be perfect? Or is that just something envisioned? No, that would be something that's rentable. <laughs> <laughs> that would be something that would be organized by the Conservancy or whoever's in charge of movie night. Um, You're just imagining it. Yeah, we're, we're imagining it. I mean, we think it's a great place to do it. The edge of the roundhouse lot doesn't interfere with parking. You can actually have a screen. This is a, they have these inflatable screens. You might have seen them. So you can have
necessarily think people wouldn't hang out on the hillside if there was enough of a space here. Because right now people hang out in the park and they, um, I, I'm not quite sure if I'm. No, I'm just presenting it as, as a challenge. To consider. Yeah, it is. The, the housing is definitely a challenge. And I think that if we were to have more screening on that side, we are showing actually more trees on this side. Yeah. That was one of the reasons why. But when you're in the park, you know, the, these folks have privacy as well, so they don't feel like they're standing on the balcony looking out into the park necessarily. They get used to the park, but there's also some screening. That's, that's the point. We'll, we'll think about that. We looked at an option, I think I said before, at actually coming all the way down the hillside here and crossing this way as opposed to coming this way to connect to the rail trail. And that and then one of the reasons why we didn't like that was because not only was the grading more challenging because of the shape of the, the configuration of the hillside, but we felt like it was really cutting close. If you want to keep all the parking over here, uh, you're cutting so close to that, the back, the downhill side of that house. So it seems like it was a mix of uh, sunny public, private, it's kind of a strange no man's land that didn't feel right for the real uh, I'm imagining riding a bicycle through this mm -hmm. and pedestrian on it. And wondering if you envision or anticipate another pathway through that might be dedicated to... Bikes only? <laughs> well, I can just see a few collisions coming. And it's kind of yeah. cute. You know, I, I guess what I would say is we would do a sign at the top that says walk your bike. Because I think, it's, I think people would probably still ride it down, especially kids. But it, it's definitely not a, it's not an easy thing to, to ride down because you've got hairpin turns. And I think the safest thing for public use would be to walk your bike down the slope. So that would avoid all incidents. Or you can, you know, you can install one of those um, rails. Have you seen that? Like yep. There's a rail, and that's a great detail. I'd love to do that, actually. So you can walk your bike down the stairs. Yeah. How steep is that? This is about, in some areas, it's, it's like a 30 to walk. Oh, the walkway. Oh, the walkway. Oh, oh. To the right. Yeah. Two people are in the middle. Yes. Yeah. Those are stairs. There's about 35 stairs there. So it's not no, the stairs are not, but this whole hillside is the walkway that is accessible. So we can't make a straight line from here to here because of the walkway. The walkway is on the concrete also? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I know you're probably not to that point yet, but you talk about climbing structures in the play space. Yeah. 
don't forget handicapped children. There are all sorts of equipment that a wheelchair can get on that right. everybody can use. It. And if you put gravel in there, again, you're impeding a wheelchair, so you want to think about yeah, that. Yeah, I should clarify that. When I say gravel, I'm talking about a product that's called decomposed granite, and that's basically crushed granite, and it is combined with a binding agent. It's called stabilizer solution, that's the product that we use. It essentially makes it compacted, and we've used it actually in playgrounds before, and it's ADA accessible. And you can use it on bike paths, over at UMass. Uh, it's a product that we really like. And you take your native crushed granite that comes from your, you know, the local plant nearby, and you mix it with this. Um, it's actually an organic binder. It's plant-based. We find that it works really well in areas where you don't want something like asphalt because a child falls, you know, on asphalt. That's not good. But we, you know, asphalt concrete, we don't necessarily want that, but we may not always want mulch because mulch is a so it's a really difficult thing to find that right, you know, that, that surface that, that works perfectly. So that's what we're looking at right now, but we'll study it further and design development. And is there a, a, a structure there where it's a nature play, or is that, what do you mean by nature play on the left hand side? I see there's a structure that looks about the same size as the previous structure. Yeah, we're showing some kind of structure in this location. Yeah. We're showing the sandbox. Uh, we're showing a, you know, a, a path through the woodland, and this is this is it right now. We've got just a, a placeholder for for <coughs> that type of you know activity. What we're actually what we would like for you tonight are, is more feedback. We've got a series of images of playgrounds only because we knew that this was an important topic to cover, and so they range um, from types of structures, more organic to more conventional, and. We don't think that the conventional, which is what you already have, is exactly what you want based on the feedback from the previous two meetings. So we have a series of images. What we'd love for you to do before you go is please, if you like something, put a tally on it. If you really like something, put two. <laughs> and the goal is to just to get your feedback on these images because that will help guide us. And as, you know, as we move forward, obviously we'll be working closely with folks, you know, in the city that will will give feedback. But this, this exercise is really important. And also, we have a large site plan up here. If you can make any comments that you think, some of the comments that you said that are really important, if you can write those down in the post-it notes, again, post it on the plan before you leave. It's helpful for us. Um, I think we're going to have to stop there. Yeah. Um, we have a yeah, this is something we're going to work closely with you on <laughs> to figure out the exact, because we've said this before, this area needs to be accessible. And we did change when it was gone, I apologize. But we know we need to get into your fleet trucks and parking. And so that's something I think uh, the number of cars and sizes of the trucks, all those things dimensionally, we'll get into in the next phase. And we'll make sure that this works. The goal, I think, you know, the intent of this concept is to show the delineation between this zone and the park zone, so that it's not confused. People aren't walking through when you're trying to load for a show and unload. Um, you show plenty of lighting at the plaza. Yep. We have lighting on yeah. the green, too. Yeah, we would like to have basically what we see is sort of perimeter lighting. I think right now we were showing it from the perspective along the edges of the walkway, so that's a definite. And then you can see it over here as well on the side, and then coming through the play area. Any other questions? I was just curious about, I, I, I'm just coming into this conversation, so this may have been answered early on, but sure. Were you guided by any sense of a general budget on this? Yeah, sure. We had, um, we had a sense of when we first did the competition years ago, 2006, um, we had a budget based on an estimate that we did on the first round, and then the first round of drawings that we did a long time ago. And we did have a budget. Jim, do you want to talk at all about <laughs> coming forward? I think um, I would say when we 
had that budget established, and obviously it's years later. We do you know, possible cut, but we are mindful of what this original budget was. So the budget, um, the budget, we sort of have a placeholder for what the budget is, and it was based on um, the design competition work that Stimson did a few years ago. The budget that um, we've been talking about at this point is $1.5 million. Um, and I'll just point out, that was for this scope of work, and not for this area down here, the overlook is something that was just added actually after the first meeting. Because what was amazing was one of the big opportunities that people kept writing on the plans was, what about the back of the park? What about the connection to the rail trail? What about the hillside? That feels like it should be part of the park. So that this whole area has been another additional um, scope of work and study. Uh, the other thing is, I looked at the pictures that you showed of the way the park w will look are really amazing. And uh, I think it's a great design for the park. But uh, the other thing that I always think about is maintenance. So have there been any estimates on maintenance? No, we haven't yeah. done estimates on maintenance yet. No, we haven't. But that's something that we will work closely with you on to determine you know, what's feasible, what makes sense, what's within a reasonable budget. The last thing we want to do is create this beautiful place that can't be maintained. <laughs> So if people don't have any more questions, we're here. So if you have more questions, we're here. But please, come on up and start to make some comments. Leave us your thoughts. Can I ask you one question? Sure. Yeah. 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 Yeah.